Hey folks, it's Andrew. Welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the mover process, which is part of the joiner mover lever process for the user lifecycle management. Let me give you a quick overview of what the mover process is. The mover process is when somebody changes positions and that could be either they get promoted or unfortunately sometimes demoted to a different position where a job title could change. When that happens, there are times where your access gets elevated, you get access to more applications, or if you, in the terms of getting demoted, you might lose access to a couple of applications or areas within your, within your job. So that's a quick overview of the mover process. You're just moving roles either within the organization, sometimes within a cost center, really depending on what kind of organization you really work for. So the mover process is very important because we stress a lot here about least privilege. And for least privilege, we want to make sure that when a user gets their access or even loses their access, they can only get access to applications or places in your environment that can only do their job. We don't want to give anybody no more or no less. So mover is very important because we want to make sure when we identify the triggers that cause a mover process we can use one two or three or maybe four different types of attributes or something that triggers that change to let our systems know hey this person has been promoted let me go ahead and give this person more access based on maybe a role if you're using rollback you can have that or something different where even a back where it's different attributes that can really trigger that it is very important that you have that defined and that's why mover is so important because if you do not you'll have somebody who a good example has been with the company for many 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 years and they've moved up the chain so let's say from a engineer to maybe even like a CISO and then when that happens that person may have access to everything that they've done before up into to a current role the problem is with most hackers they like to go whale fishing which is going after whales and if they can somehow get access to their information and get into the system, the problem is now they've access to all the other systems that could cause problems. So that's why mover process is just so important and you must wait quickly or you must really identify the right triggers or the different processes to really make sure that when you have a mover process defined that the access is either given or access is taken away because you got demoted. So I talked about the importance of a mover process. Let's talk about the different ways you can really trigger a mover process. For most organizations, you might be you yourself might be the person helping identify this, or you might have a business analyst that might help you really define this. A typical scenario that might occur is you'll work with your HR systems and identify, hey, what constitutes a job change? Could it be a job title change? Could it be a job title plus location? Or could it be a combination of three things? Like I said earlier, it could be a job title change, a location change, and maybe a cost center change. All those three attributes could really define your mover process. And that can trigger to say, if you change something, you define that this is more access. And again, if maybe you change to a different organization within the company or a different cost center, it might you might actually even lose access to that particular subset of applications, and you might gain some ones for a new one. A good example is, is I always use this bank example. It's just easiest for me to explain. In a bank example, let's say you go from an account manager or somebody who does accounts for one location. What if you move to a different state? And there are rules within the banking industry that says you cannot have access to old accounts in the old location. So for our example, you will lose all access to all those user accounts, let's say in the state of Virginia, for example, and you might gain it in the state of New York. So that's the easiest really example of how you can take access from a different location, lose some, gain some. In the terms of being promoted, maybe you become a manager. And if you do, you might get access to look at timesheets or a payroll system so those are different applications that as a manager you have access to where before maybe you're just a regular worker you don't have access to that 
So the steps involved when it comes to a remote process is, like I said earlier, you want to really define what is it, all the different attributes. And there are times where you might not have attributes. You might have to use some other kind of triggers. And that's where you got to be strategic and really work with your IT team, your business team, and most likely even your HR team to really identify that really what is a mover process. And it can be complex. Sometimes in my career, I've had complexities where I have contractors from different countries and they might be switching roles within the organization, but they're in a different location. So my, I might have restrictions there. And in the mover process, you really gotta sit down and make sure when you define these processes, you take into account different regulations. In, for example, in Europe, they have GR, GRDP, that's one option. And in other places where, I believe it's Luxembourg, where they have strict internet laws, you might not be able to do a mover process within there. You might have to work with a company or you have to leave it outside and work with the company in Luxembourg to say, okay, take this maybe new rules or mover workflows in and then incorporate it into your systems. Because in Luxembourg, for example, they have strict internet laws where Anything outside cannot touch anything inside, and that is another complexity. So when you define your steps, and they're very simple, one by one, working with your HR team to really understand what are the different processes, are there attributes that we can use that are common, and then if you can, define what the roles or access are for those different applications. If you're using RBAC, for example, if you know a manager, you might use your A20 role to identify the different roles and you'll know, okay, if I'm a manager level one, for example, I might get these set of, set of applications, level two, maybe a little bit more, but then you also have to be careful that when you define that, do you lose access to anything below you? Because you, again, do not need that. It's because we want to abide by least privileged. So what are some challenges when it comes to mover process? I said earlier that there are times where maybe you don't have a defined process because job changes are different. I've been in some organizations where they keep everybody static, which means they have bye bye. Nobody needs to be a VP or a manager. Everybody is a single title. That could be a problem. And that's where you need to sit down and talk with whoever makes those decisions to say, can we use other attributes? There are times where some companies let people write wherever they want. I've seen some cool companies who are very hip and they like to say, I'm a cybersecurity ninja. And I'm like, what does that mean? And that's where you gotta be very strategic and understand what do those really mean and how do we really constitute changes in roles. And that is the most common complexity that you may have. And the second one when it comes to complexity is sometimes those teams don't wanna play ball. I've been on some projects where the HR team just does not want to talk to me. They don't care, they don't see the value, and this is where as a IM practitioner, a manager, or even a BA, if you're watching these videos, is you want to make sure you understand the stakeholder and really tell them what's the value for them. Because that's a challenge too, because if they don't play ball, your, your move process is sunk in the water and could cause problems. So my suggestion and things I've used in my career is really sit down with the HR team and really tell them what is the value of it, how I can save them time and potentially money, and then what is the implications or what can be the cause of the problems for that. That typically works for me, but sometimes you might have maybe another senior manager come in and kind of help you drive that message. So really, again, the two complexities that could happen is, number one, you have companies that really don't have a static way of doing job changes where you need to be more strategic and kind of sit down and really understand the situation or the companies themselves. And the second thing is sometimes you have companies that don't wanna play ball. And that's when you gotta really gotta sit down and really understand or they're, understand where they're coming from of why they don't wanna play ball and then really educate them and tell them, hey, you know, here's the value of us defining the mover process. So that's the mover process in a nutshell. You To reiterate, mover process is really when you take somebody's role and you either get promoted or D or not promoted, you may lose a role or D promoted, hopefully that's a word. <laughs> but you really want to make sure that you define what is it in terms of access. Again, we want to make sure we really stress least privileged. And that's where the mover process is very, very, very important. Now, if you didn't watch my other videos, you can watch the joiner process that I talked earlier about how it is important to onboard somebody, make sure that on day one, they get the, the right equipment, the right access so they can do their job. Because we all know day ones can be stressful. But we also know that when you move to a new role, you're hopeful that maybe you can get your same access or maybe more. 
So that's where you got to make sure that your move process is really intact. And in, a, in the next video that I'm going to work on is the lever process, which is very important because you want to make sure when you when an employee leaves the company that their access is terminated on a timing basis, usually it's right then and there. I'm actually going to talk about some repercussions that could happen when you don't have a great lever process. So there you go. That's the mover process in a nutshell. Really hope you enjoyed it. everything. If you liked what you heard, you want to hear more, smash that like button. Give me a comment down below. And if not, as always, stay curious because you never know. I'll see you soon.